When I caught up with him earlier, I asked him how certain was he that a budget would be agreed. Well, nobody can be certain until it does happen, but uh, I've gone through this so often in the, the, the past on issues that uh, I'm as certain as you can be that uh, there will be uh, agreement. I think there is always a propensity on the part of some political parties to, uh, to favour being against something as they move into an election. That would be a fairly cardly way forward, but uh, I suspect that it may be uh, the route that some will take. Well, we seem to have a difference of emphasis between what you're saying and what the finance minister is saying. He doesn't seem to think that a budget is likely to be agreed. Well, th there always is a chance that there, there won't be until it happens. Uh, I, I think if anybody listened to uh, the Deputy First Minister at question time today, uh, they will have heard very clearly that he was uh, making it uh, his view and Sinn Féin's view that they wanted to get uh, a budget and were going to put the necessary work into to achieving that. We've had our own meetings uh, with them. We have a budget review group that's sitting down and looking at all the, the opportunities that are there for raising further revenue. We're looking at where there can be uh, savings within the system. We're looking at what's needed to be done to ensure that we continue to grow our economy. And at the same time, we're looking to see how we can help those who will be uh, in the, the greatest degree of uh, need and vulnerability. Sinn Féin say that they want to see action from the government on an enterprise zone and some movement on the corporation tax issue. Is that a precondition, do you think, at the moment? Well, it can't be a precondition for them uh, agreeing a budget because it won't happen in time. Uh, my understanding is that uh, the proposal by the, the government to produce that uh, paper has already slipped. Uh, it's uh, at present not likely to happen before December. As I understand it, it will not come forward as a set of proposals, but as an analysis of our situation. It will go out to consultation, and it's unlikely that they'll take any decisions on that uh, until sometime in March. Uh, the, the very last day for budget clearance here in the Assembly would be uh, somewhere in the early part of January. So if there wasn't a budget by the early part of January, it would be over to the statutory processes to take over. Just explain that for us. You say there has to be an agreement on a budget by the beginning of January, otherwise the statutory process takes over. What does that mean? Well, you're required to have a budget uh, before the third day prior to the end of the financial year, uh, which is the end of March. Uh, to, to be able to achieve that, you would require the eight weeks for consultation and two weeks at, at least uh, to get it through the uh, Assembly. So work your way back from that and you, you'll get uh, the, the last date for... Uh, us having an agreement. If it's not done by some time during the course of uh, the early part of January, it can't be done in time. Uh, and therefore, you would be in the position of uh, the department having to bring forward its own budget. That would be very detrimental for Northern Ireland because it's on the basis of 75% of the previous spend. Uh, now, it's bad enough having to face the cuts that we are facing without having to go with even less money. Uh, so uh, I think there's an incentive on the, uh, on the part of every party in the executive to ensure that we can do this job. I don't see, I mean, I, I was finance minister when we did the, the last budget for, for a four year period. Uh, there's nothing different that's happening this time. Uh, everybody holds their cards tight to their chest and they hold them back as long as they can. Uh, they want to, to see where there is movement and, uh, and ex exactly how much they can uh, gain in terms of their, their own uh, particular priorities. Uh, so I don't see any different procedures at play this time. Uh, we have a, uh, a tighter uh, financial restraint, there's no question about that. But I, I think that there's a, an ability on the part of the, the politicians to, to reach an agreement. Uh, and certainly if they have the will, they will do it. Well, is it a case of you and Sammy Wilson playing good cop, bad cop? Uh, there's a difference between Sammy and I. We have our weekly ministerial uh, meetings, sometimes twice week weekly. Uh, party ministerial meetings and we're on exactly the, the same page. Uh, Sammy rightly, because he has the job of uh, drawing it up. He's in the, the position of wanting to get things done uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm in the, the position where I want both uh, the, the, the draft to be moving forward and at the same time to make sure that we have exhausted every option of getting additional finance in. And I, I feel very sore because I was one of those who negotiated with the previous government the £18 billion uh, agreement, who had it guaranteed. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to give that one uh, up. If, if there's uh, any steam left in that engine, I'm still going to get, make sure that uh, we get some movement. Uh, again, I feel badly betrayed on, in terms of the, the funding for, for policing and justice, because again, that should have been additional to the £18 billion. 
uh, and uh, this coalition government have just included it in the general spend. What would you make of the fact that you haven't received that requested meeting with the Prime Minister and in fact the Secretary of State says stop running to Downing Street, come speak to him instead? Well, I think it's very bad form. You have a, a Prime Minister who when he came into office came over to tell us how he was going to follow a respect agenda, some respect. Peter Robinson, many thanks indeed.